This should be a, a basic right for somebody that has served this country, is to have a burial that has dignity. It is a sad reality for too many of those who serve our country, our nation's heroes dying poor without the means for a burial worthy of their service and sacrifice. Brandy Cruz is here tonight with a story on honoring those heroes in life and in death. Yeah, tonight we introduce you to a man whose life was a mystery to many, but who in death reminds all of us to honor those who answer the call to serve. We know him simply as the man in apartment 409. We don't know his hobbies. We don't know his political persuasions or how he voted. We don't know his religion. We don't know his favorite movies, his favorite music. Uh, we just don't know. And maybe that makes this all the more compelling. The story begins here at this quiet building on Seattle's Capitol Hill. Inside apartment 409, a 57 year old man died unexpectedly. His death certificate says he fell and hit his head. But other than that, it doesn't tell us much about him. His mother, unknown, father, unknown, spouse, job, education, unknown. The medical examiner can't find any close friends or family of the man in 409. A month goes by and no one comes forward to claim his remains. To whom it may concern, the medical examiner wrote, he neither has the family nor the funds to handle his disposition. We have officially declared the subject indigent. But as it turns out, the man in 409 did have a brother of sorts, a brother not by blood, but through a bond just as strong. I was in the Marine Corps from uh, 2000 to 2004. I served in Kuwait and Iraq. James Lindley now works as a director at Columbia Funeral Home in South Seattle. In the Marine Corps and in, in other branches of service, we try to take care of our own. You see, one thing that death certificate does tell us about the man in 409 is that he, too, was a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces, a man who served his country honorably, a man who deserved a burial fitting of that service, whether he had the money to pay for it or not. This should be a, a basic right for somebody that has served this country, is to have a burial that has dignity. Brian Fry with the King County Veterans Program says they did have contact with the man in 409 before his death. They'd given him food and rental vouchers when he fell on hard times. What's the last contact you had with him? It was uh, June of 2011. For this particular month or instance, uh, he needed assistance to stabilize his housing. The veterans program also helps with the cost of burials for vets who can't afford it. We subsidize that burial expense uh, up to $500. Fry says they are writing those $500 checks more and more often. In 2013, they helped with the cost of burying 19 indigent veterans. That jumped to 32 in 2014, 37 in 2015 and 15 so far this year. You cannot put a price on, uh, on what these men and women have contributed to our country uh, and to the civil liberties that we enjoy every day because of the cost that they pay for us. I have encountered many families that have financial difficulties. They take usually a cardboard or a plastic urn to the National Cemetery because they can't afford anything different. And our veterans, James says, deserve much better. It's time that we stop sitting idly by and that we take care of the people that put their lives on the line for us. It's why he took possession of the man in 409 whose remains had been sitting at the medical examiner's office for 30 days. James started making phone calls. He called other veterans, firefighters strangers who showed up to honor the man from apartment 409. Pretty sure all of you uh, never knew uh, the person that we're honoring. On April 6th, nearly two months after his death and after a service at Columbia Funeral Home, the man who died in apartment 409 was laid to rest with full honors at Mount Tahoma National Cemetery. Not a single person in attendance that day knew him, but they all felt called to be there. We're his family now. Nobody, nobody wants to claim him, we will. Because we all feel the, the same way. Yeah. We all want to help. It just proves how much people uh, want to honor our veterans and, and take care of them, um, no matter who they are. Oh, and the man in 409 does have a name. Ronald Keith Nold. 
He joined the Army in 1975 and served until 1979. Uh, and I know I sent you a couple names that he goes by. It took some time to find them, but Ronald, known by some as Gareth, did have friends. Okay, so the photo I sent you is him. People he impacted in one way or another during his life. Like his neighbors at that apartment on Capitol Hill. You could always find him at their block parties. Then there's the young soldier he met while camping along the Oregon coast who snapped these photos. They traded stories and drank whiskey together, he told us. And years later, Ron would send him postcards from his travels. The story of Ronald Nold, the man in 409, is just one out of many. A story of service and sacrifice, followed by years of struggle. Struggle not only in life, but in death. God, we thank you for Ronald K. Nold. We thank you for his life, a life that's known entirely to you, but pretty much unknown to us. At least Ronald was taken care of the way that he should have. And I just hope that, you know, we can put something in place to, to help make sure that these veterans don't become indigent, because they don't deserve that. These are, these are great men and women that um, have gone above and beyond to, to serve our country. Let's not let them become isolated and end their life in a way that um, is sad. God rest his soul. And God, thank you for our country. And thank you for each who serves and each one who has served. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Now, while every veteran who serves our country honorably is entitled to a plot at a national cemetery, funeral and burial costs aren't always paid for. In fact, a veteran whose death is not related to their service gets just $300 from the VA toward the cost of a burial. That number hasn't changed in nearly 40 years. It is the same amount that veterans got back in 1978. David Marnie. All right, Brandy, it highlights.